Cliff Robertson, a great actor, a great aviator, and I am privileged to have the first award in your name, so thank you very much. I don't think I've had time to put the don't panic on there yet, but <laughs> don't panic. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, thank you for all, to all the living legends for choosing me tonight. I, I am privileged and honored, uh, as I should be. Uh, I probably wouldn't be here, really, if it weren't for Qantas Airways, uh, this uh, amazing airline, which I do think is the best airline in the world, allowed an American man to fulfill his child, childhood fantasy by becoming uh, one of their pilots, and they trained me in the Boeing 747, and they helped me uh, subsidize my 707 to promote their airline, and uh, Jeff Dixon and Margaret Jackson are two of the greatest uh, professionals I've ever known. And, and I, I first met Jeff uh, on a tour for a movie in Australia. And I had this corporate Boeing 707 that I was flying to promote the movie. And uh, all I wanted was a, a, a permission to, to put a paint job on this corporate jet. And uh, that's why, why I met with Jeff. And, and he, he said, well, I'll consider that. And, uh, and I said, well, but if you you know, would want me to promote your airline, and you would want me to uh, be some sort of an ambassador to your airline, I'd be up for that too, you know. Uh, and, and by the way, I'd pay you to allow me to use your, your, uh, I'm not a good businessman at all. <laughs> so he said, you'd pay me to put a paint job on your plane, and you'd pay me to promote, he said, well, I think you have a, he said, but I'm going to give you a call in a month. So. Unfortunately, a month later, uh, September 11th happened, but Jeff called and said, you know what, John, we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to do this for all the airlines, and that's what I love about Qantas. They're always thinking about the, biggest, the bigger picture, and he said, I, I think you should do a world tour with your 707 and your permission to paint it in Qantas colors, and we get people back up in the air, not afraid to fly, you know, uh, embrace it like you do, and I think if you go in your vintage uniform and you go to 13 cities, 10 countries, we'll get the, the world back into uh, being interested in flying again. So we did that. It was a two-month tour. It was very successful. So successful that we did it three, three more times. And uh, the airline did very well, as did I, by uh, associating myself with them. So I have to thank Jeff and Margaret for their, their graciousness in that, which led uh, me to another uh, 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 proposition with uh, Breitling watches. They were so impressed with what happened with, with Qantas, they asked if, they would, if I would represent their 100-year-old uh, aviation history with their watches. And uh, I was very, very uh, proud to do that because they, they put a bio in all these ads. And Tom Hanks called me and he said, why is it I've known you 20 years and I know more now about you from that ad <laughs> that, that Breitling put out? And I said, well, uh, I don't know, Tom. I, I go to school about five times a year for recurrency on all these jet ratings, and I, I'm just too exhausted to talk about it, <laughs> which is, is a fact. Anyone here who knows what recurrency is like on multiple airplanes, you know how, how it can be, which led me to my third reason I'm here, which is uh, I'm, I'm very excited about, which is Vern Rayburn, who, who created this brilliant jet called the Eclipse Jet, very light jet. And uh, it, it is, I assure you, one of the more genius things you'll ever experience. And uh, I'm not just saying that because I'm, I'm representing them. It's true. Uh, but Vern and I go back because I owned a, a Lockheed Constellation um, that I was in love with. But at the time, I really couldn't afford to refurbish it the way someone like a Vern Rayburn could. So I proposed... Uh, uh, this uh, to uh, Vern, and Vern uh, purchased the plane from me. He refurbished it, took it around the world, and uh, it, be, it was for, I don't know, 15 years, a, a real uh, wonderful air show piece. So uh, that history I had with Vern invited me to present myself as a possible liaison for the Eclipse jet, and I've really enjoyed the last uh, few months flying this, this incredible airplane. And uh, it is really, uh, it is, really the new century. It is the Jetsons. It is, uh, it is uh, sophisticated in all the ways that you want a plane to be sophisticated. 
And the passengers love it, by the way. They really, really do love it. So I thank you, Vern, for uh, helping me stand here tonight. And, and thirdly, uh, fourthly, I, I, would, I would love to thank my mother and father because they believed in, um, well, they believed in books. You know, they believed in, 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 in purchasing books and books from the library to inspire their children. And they, they liked that I uh, loved uh, aviation. So they, they let me have any book I wanted on the subject of aviation. I remember John Florida, I think was his name. He had aviation from the ground up, explained every department of, of, of aviation and what you could be interested in. That was my kind of Bible. And then there was another book uh, that I was inspired by and I thought uh, I'd show it to you tonight. It was Gordon's Jet Flight. <laughs> it's a golden book, but every, every child has to be inspired by something. And this was the book I was inspired by because my father was very busy trying to recreate uh, DC-3s in the backyard building from scraps and I was busy flying, uh, hiring flight attendants to be on that DC-3, the, the Girl Scouts, and <laughs> got very complicated and poor dad did whatever I wanted and I felt bad for him but he was a, a great father in that. So I can't get my kids to listen to any of this book. <laughs> but I thought I'd end the night by not reading the whole book because I know that you don't want to do that either but I'll, I'll read the first page and the last page. and. I guess the point of this is that you never know what's going to inspire completely a, a dream. And I now have a Boeing 707 sitting in my backyard along with a Gulfstream II because of this book. Now, here it goes. Grandma's letter came at breakfast. I'd love to see Gordon for my birthday, it said. Daddy thought about this. You and mother may go tomorrow, he said to Gordon. You may go by Astrojet. Yippee, said Gordon. If you finish your cereal by then, Daddy said. Gordon packed his suitcase. He did it so well that the toe of one blue sock hang out. So cut to the back, because I'm sure you don't want to hear the, the middle of it. But when he arrives at the airport and his grandmother sees him, you're my best present, said Grandma as they left the airport. But Gordon said, I'm going to get another present, too. I'll get another Astrojet ride when I go home. And from that, I read this every day, back and forth. And you know, you never know what you decide when you're eight years old. But obviously, I decided to have a, a 707 in the backyard <laughs> from that. So uh, thank you. I, I guess my point is, is that I don't know how to inspire the next generation other than setting a good example like everyone in this room has done for their, their next generation. But I hope that, that there's a book out there uh, for our new generations that uh, helped, will help them decide to become of uh, our aerospace and aviation industries. Thank you for listening. And uh, I love being part of this community. Thank you.